Thanks, Thanks for Kurt. coming to court. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone, for your statements. I'm going to go back to Mr. Payne now. Thank you, Judge. When I first met Mr. Mosley, he was nothing short of tremendously remorseful. The only thing that has ever been a contention here was the fact that Mr. Mosley believed that he did everything he could to slow that car down, to move out of the way, and that this was a car accident. When we went to trial, the defense did not lie to the jury. We did not mislead the jury in any way. We wanted, Frank Mosley specifically, wanted them to see that it was an accident. He pressed the brakes as hard as he could, we heard testimony. It broke the BMW system, how hard he pressed those brakes. He swerved around cars, and ultimately he hit the victim here. As I said before, and I'll say again, she did nothing wrong. She was doing nothing wrong. This is a hundred percent Frank Mosley's fault, but it's an accident, a tragic accident. I can listen to comments about myself, about defense's theories, but to paint Frank Mosley as, the, as a monster, as a person who did not care, it's highly incorrect. He did care. He cared so much that he wrote letters to the family, to the victim, because that's what he wears every day as he's sitting in that cell. He, Judge, I'll read what Mr. Frank said to the PSI writer. I take responsibility for what happened that caused her death and the death of her unborn child. If I could, I would change places with her. I don't know her, but she didn't deserve this, and there's a special place in heaven for her. We have grown men, 30, 40 years old, who fight, cheat, lie, and steal to get a favorable sentence. Mosley didn't do that. We have those same men who never accept what's coming to them. Mr. Mosley is different. I submitted the PSI, or I submitted my sentencing memorandum to the court. We know he graduated, but we also know that he is what I would call a very talented music artist. This case has never been say low stakes. Let's say everyone has known about this case since it started. It's been a very big deal. There are communities across Wisconsin listening to this court from the victim side and from the defensive side. After this trial, Running Rebels asked me to speak to the children there. And their question was, what do we do in the situation? I told them to just stop. Stop. If you are in a car, you have drugs in your pocket, just stop. You have license plates that have issues, or this car's not yours, just stop. Just stop because the court will understand and will respect you for just stopping. You did not make a situation worse. And I believe that a message does need to be sent. But what should that message be? If you make a mistake and we catch you, we're gonna send you away for 40 years? Is that the message we wanna give them? I don't think so. I think we want this to stop. I, I want it to stop. How do we get that? We have to reach the youth. And 40 years is unfathomable to a 20-year-old, unfathomable to a 17-year-old, 15-year-old. 
They think their life is over when it's really not. Sit there, stay calm, and let this process play out because you will be treated fairly. The courts will hear you, but if you run and you cause this travesty, the death of a very innocent young lady, you're gonna have worse consequences. So judge, I'm asking for a sentence that penalizes impunity for Moby for short, but one that also allows him to live more life as I believe that would be consistent. And I can continue on saying, stop. It will only get worse if you run. Your life will not be over. We will deal with it on the back end. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Payne. So I've heard from Mr. Payne, Mr. Mosley, that this is your turn to speak. Uh, you can, if you have a statement you want to read, that's fine. However you want to. Initially, I had a statement wrote.